Hi, everybody. This is uh, Silvio Canto in Dallas, uh, Texas on Tuesday, March 27th, and welcome to our video commentary. I have a post over at the American Thinker today. I hope you have a chance to see it. Uh, and I asked the question, why are these marches or these young people who are marching or the marches in general related to the, uh, to the shooting at the, at the high school in South Florida? Why is it that these marches have become so politicized? And in particular, why is it that they're attacking Senator Rubio with such ferocity? I mean, the things they're saying about Senator Rubio are really over the top. I mean, it's one thing to say, you know, I don't like your gun record or the way you vote on guns. Okay, fine. I mean, that's okay. That's within reason. But the, the accusations against Senator Rubio are going way beyond that. And, and I think it, I mean, the NRA too, but, you know, we've spoken about the NRA before. I mean, the attacks on the NRA are just plainly silly and ridiculous. But with Senator Rubio, I think there's an added element uh, to all of this. And I think Senator Rubio has been the target of the left in this country, the Hispanic left, for quite some time. Because Senator Rubio is probably the one Hispanic politician in the United States with the best chance of being elected president. He is very likely... I mean, if you were looking at, at the people who could be, let's say, a, a, pre, a Hispanic president of the United States, he's the one in the best position to do that. He's the one most likely to win uh, the Electoral College and to win uh, the election for lots and lots of reasons. He's very telegenic. He's a great communicator. He has worked very hard at uh, developing his knowledge of foreign policy and so on. I mean, he's, he's a very attractive uh, candidate uh, in, in many ways. So the left has always been afraid of, of Senator Rubio. In fact, the Clinton campaign, we know now from some of the uh, internal documents and so on, the left was always afraid of Senator Rubio. Senator Rubio was the one candidate that Hillary Clinton did not want to run against. So all of a sudden you see these attacks on Senator Rubio and you have to ask yourself, why are these young people, uh, some of the people behind the march, why, why are they attacking, for example, Senator Rubio as harshly as they are? Is it about guns? Well, if it's about guns, why aren't they attacking Senator Sanders? You know, Senator Sanders, this is one of the best kept secrets uh, and something the media doesn't want to touch. Senator Sanders actually has a pretty pro-gun record. He represents Vermont, uh, which is a state that has a very high ownership of guns. And, you know, he doesn't seem to get challenged on that. In fact, he spoke at one of these marches. And yet they're going after Senator Rubio because of the way he votes. And I just find the whole thing to be rather uh, interesting. And I think it's all political, frankly. And this kind of leads me to my next point. These young people are really politicizing, or the people, let's say, not the young people, the people behind these marches, because these young people are being exploited. Sadly, they're being exploited. But these marches are becoming way too political for their own good. Uh, and if you really want to do something about gun control, have a serious debate about school safety, gun control, and all of that, these marches are going about it the wrong way. Uh, and what these marches are, the mistake that these marches are making is the same mistake, by the way, the women made uh, earlier this year and the year before. And that is they have a march about women, but only anti-Trump women march or only anti-Trump women speak, you know, a march for women, shouldn't you have women who voted for Trump? Shouldn't you have women who, let's say, oppose abortion or support President uh, Trump's uh, economic policies? No, none of that. It's all a march by women who hate Trump or are against Trump. And that's fine. I mean, it's a free country. You can be against Trump. But if you're going to have a march about women or a march for women, shouldn't you be honest enough and say, well, really, our objective is to only to talk about Trump or, or be anti-Trump? And, and I, I think just like the Women's March, I think, became too politicized for its own good, I think this march of the young people is also becoming too politicized for its own good. So I hope that, I hope that the, the parents, really, of these young people pulled in back a little bit and do not allow their young people to be exploited and utilized like this, because this is not good for these young people. I really sincerely believe that some of these young people in the near future are going to look back in, in, at all of this and ask themselves, why did I allow myself to be used in that fashion? Because they're being exploited, frankly, and used 
uh, by people who have other objectives. They're not interested in gun control. What they want to do is destroy Senator Rubio. What they want to do is turn public opinion against the NRA. Now, they're not succeeding in those two things. As we talked about the other day, there's a brand new poll that says that 58% of the American people see a gun as, as something that improves their safety. But nevertheless, these marches have become very loud. And I think some of the media organizations have also uh, become very one-sided on the coverage of, of this topic. So let's hope it ends. Let's have a serious discussion about gun control. I would love to participate uh, in, in a debate about gun safety and school safety. I would love to do that. But that's not what's coming out of these marches, uh, unfortunately. Thank you for watching. We have all of these uh, videos over at YouTube. We have them on Twitter, and we also have them on my blog. Have a great day, everybody. Talk to you later.